Hello everyone, as you can see I've got another update video for you. A little bit different from the previous ones though. All the prior videos focused on new features and stuff like that. But this one is about a tool that I've been working on, which you can see here. A quick recap would be that I have built an action system which covers many different things, such as animation, motion, uh, which is controlled by impulses, uh, which I'll be talking about a lot in this one. But also there's other things like particles, shaders, uh, sound effects there's, that's not actually in right now, but there's a place for them to go. Um, lots of different things on each action in the game. Uh, and the system is already in a good place, but part of the problem with it was as streamlined as it was, where basically I only had to type in a few values to get the character to do something. Uh, even that means recompiling the game, right? If it's actually written in the code, you, you have to recompile, which at the moment only takes about five or six seconds, I would say. But then if it's an enemy, which most of the creatures in the game will be, right? There's only one player character, but there's a bunch of different enemies. Then when you want to see a new action, you know, maybe the enemy needs a couple of seconds to get into position. And then maybe even then they won't always do it. So maybe you have to hard code them to do it just to see what it looks like. It's not very streamlined in that way, right? Even if it only takes, even if that only adds a few more seconds, now you're looking at 10 or 15 seconds just to see the changes that you've made to an action. And when the change that you're making is a very small one, it can be dif difficult to tell the difference. If there's a 10 second gap in your memory, you know, how did they actually look when they compared to each other and blah, blah, blah. So this is the next step up from that, uh, where now I can edit the most important parts of an action and see the effects in real time with this tool. Not everything. It doesn't cover particles or shaders. Those are the two biggest uh, omissions. Uh, I do have a separate tool for drawing hitboxes and I'll probably add projectiles and things to that, like just, you know, a general kind of where things go on each uh, character. You know, like I talked before about uh, deflectors and reflectors and stuff like that. Those are in, in the other tool. Um, but this is the bulk of each action, right? So there's kind of four components here. There's the animation, which I've talked about before, is very important. Uh, arguably a little bit more important in 2D than it is in 3D, or, or just important in a different way, maybe. Because as I've said, 2D is kind of like a flipbook approach where you you change the, the sprite entirely when you go to a new animation. And as a result, you want to make sure that the hitboxes only appear when they actually appear on the sprite and stuff like that. Uh, over here are the impulses. So all of these boxes here are the impulses. Um, these are the collision response types. And this thing here I'll demonstrate later, which is the action transition trigger. So there's about four different things that can be edited here. I would say the animation is actually the most important, um, but the impulses have, there's a lot more to tweak on them because there's a lot more of them. Um, but these these two elements are definitely the most important part of any action. And being able to tweak them in real time is very valuable. So, uh, oh yeah, before I continue as well, I'll say I know this UI looks like crap, but uh, it's only for internal use anyway. So, you know, and it's my first time doing any kind of UI stuff in Game Maker, so I don't think it's that bad. Um, yeah, some of the stuff, like if I type in big values, they'll overflow the box. And things like these things here should probably be drop down boxes because there's a limited number of things I can choose. Um, like this, I'll just, it won't do anything right now, but I'll just show you. Like there's a few different choices I can pick there. And um, they will, it'll, it'll make sense later why that turned into a, a flea. Don't worry about it. So anyway, um, this, this, you know, there's only a limited number of things in there. So maybe that should be a drop down. But anyway. Uh, it's streamlined enough and it's way better than what it was before. I think it was already in a good place. I don't want to diminish myself too much. Even just being able to type in a few values and get changes was already good. But I think this was an important step to make as well. And um, I feel like it's already paying off. But it's probably time for me to just demonstrate the tool. And that's what most of this video will be, just demonstrating all the different things here so you can get a grip on it. Like I said, there's no new features here, right? This is not a feature video. All of this stuff has been in the game before, uh, almost all of it. Anyway, this this starting value for impulses is new. I, I might explain that later. But anyway, uh, all of this stuff was in the game before. It's just now I can tweak it. And now you might get a better sense of the stuff I've been talking about in prior videos, right? You'll get a better sense of how this stuff works. 
So I'll just start demonstrating now and I'll talk a little bit as I go. Hopefully I can give you a good order overview. Although I won't be able to demonstrate everything here because there's a, I've built a, a library. You can see there's a curve box here. I'll show you some curves. There's, this is a curve as well here. Um, I'll show you some curves and I'll explain a little bit about that. But I have, I built up a library of about a hundred generic curves of different shapes that might be useful for different things. And even then, if something doesn't fit into those generic shapes, I can always draw a custom curve for any given action. Um, I think it's best to try and avoid doing that to cut down on the number of assets. But anyway, there's a lot of curves and I'm not going to demonstrate them all here. And there's all kinds of different combinations of things that can be done that obviously won't be demonstrated. I would say even I don't know the full extent of things that can be done here. And that's kind of part of the fun of building a system like this is being able to experiment with it more easily and figure out, you know, what, what it can actually do, right? So this is by no means a, a full demonstration, but I'll show you a bunch of stuff now anyway. So the simplest thing to do here would just be to give the character some X speed. So I've given him two X speed, which means that he moves at two pixels per frame. These numbers are frames, right? The game is frame dependent. So this will last for 60 frames. This action here will last for 60 frames. And um, this means that it, the rate of the impulse will increase at 160th. So it will take 60 frames to reach its maximum speed. But right now it's a constant it's a constant curve, which means that it's not really a curve at all, right? It's just that every impulse uses a curve. So the curve in this case is just a straight line at the top of the graph. It doesn't even move. It just says, just give me the full power of whatever this impulse is. So this constant on means just go to two, right? Just give me two straight away. So if you imagine a graph here, right? A uh, picture in X and Y graph, the curve is just at the top of the graph here in this case, just a straight line. Don't know if that will make sense. But well, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense if I do something like this. I'll do linear up, right? Now, kind of a subtle difference here. Let me drag this out a little bit longer. So maybe you'll see it a little bit better. Uh, kind of a subtle difference um, when it's just a small movement over a short time frame. But the linear up is like, again, if you picture a graph, it just goes along the diagonal from zero to one on both sides, right? So it's just a straight line like that. Again, not actually curved, right? But we consider it to be a curve. It just happens to be a straight line. Um, so it's a straight line that goes up at a diagonal. And what that means is, so picture it this way, start at zero, right? And then advance 1 60th of the way towards two every frame, right? So this means it will gradually speed up over the course of 60 frames. And then on the 60th frame, it will have reached max speed. And because this isn't looping, this is the loop box, right? Because it doesn't loop, it just stays at the end of the graph and carries on at that speed. If I set it to, let me drag this out even longer here. Uh, if I set this to loop, maybe you'll understand it a little bit more easily, right? So now when I tick this box, the action will start looping um, every second, right? So we have to wait for him to respawn. Now you can see it speeds up and then it comes to a stop because it goes back to the start of the curve and it says, okay, my starting thing is zero. So that's why it comes to a stop. So it's kind of, if you picture the movement, it's kind of a sawtooth pattern. If you think of it that way, he speeds up and then he comes to a complete stop and he speeds up and comes to a complete stop. And obviously this is how in previous videos I was able to do that kind of limping motion and the when he had the sword over his head, the, the stancing walk where he kind of uh, moves back and forth a little bit. And of course these loops can be applied to any kind of curve. So the um, mono in ease up. So this is this is a nice ease curve, right? So it's a gentle curve. It's, it's very similar to the linear one in that it goes up, but it has a little bit of a curve applied to it. So it gives a little bit um, more weight to the start, right? It speeds up a little bit more slowly and then it kind of speeds up at the end, right? It's it's hard to describe, but it's like a, a curve that goes up. And then there's varying levels of these curves, like varying levels of extremity. So I think everybody knows what a, hopefully I can spell this right. Again, this might be a drop down, but actually there's about a hundred curves. So I don't think I would want to put it in a drop down. Anyway, this is a, an exponential curve instead, instead. So I think everybody knows what an exponential graph looks like, right? It starts out very low and then it shoots up. And that's what's happening here. It's using lower values for most of the walk, but it's kind of jumping forward a little bit as it goes. 
and um, there's varying different versions of this like we can do a, a downwards one which is basically just playing the same thing backwards right so it would go fast and slow fast and slow uh, or we can you know we can make the exponential thing happen at the start rather than the end so it goes you know it, there's all kinds of different variations on this exponential curve that can be done uh, let me put it back to a constant and demonstrate a different thing so I'm going to take the looping off although it doesn't matter if it's a if it's a constant the loop actually doesn't matter because it's again it's using a constant value right so the loop doesn't matter when it's constant but anyway we'll take the constant off and I'll demonstrate a different um, a different thing here uh, okay as you can see let me speed him up a little bit let me make him respawn a little bit more quickly as well uh, what's happening here is even though the character is in midair, the character is already like he's here by the time he hits the ground, right? So the X speed is, is being applied the whole time that it's in the air. Um, but maybe we don't want that sometimes. Maybe we want certain actions to only be able to apply an impulse if the character is grounded or airborne. That's what these two boxes are for. G for grounded, A for airborne. So if I untick the airborne box, we'll see next time he respawns, he just drops, right? And the impulse only begins to apply once he becomes grounded. So this can be a way of like limiting a character from, you know, gaining the, the benefit of an impulse until they're grounded or airborne and then they, they get it, right? Just a kind of a useful thing. Um, now, it is a little bit, it's a little bit trickier to use these tools than I have, than I've made it look so far because, uh, X speed is not modified by anything else by itself, right? So so far, the duration of these things has applied for the whole duration of the action, right? This is how long it's taking him to respawn, three seconds. And we're applying the impulse for that whole time. But what if I only apply it on the first frame, right? Well, what's happening is his X speed gets set to five and then this impulse stops actually applying, but there's nothing here to modify X speed back, right? There's nothing that says, oh, kill X speed now, right? There's nothing that says I have to come to a stop because by default, the characters don't have any friction. So like one interaction that we can do here is, you know, it was useful to turn off the airborne thing, but we might want to do kind of the opposite of that, right? Where we have the character move in the air, but then come to a halt when they're grounded. So if I change this, I take off the airborne, on the friction and let's give him a small amount of friction and hopefully yep yeah, he skids to a stop so that's the thing that finally kills the x speed this gets subtracted every frame until he comes down to a stop we can give him a little bit more you, you have to use a light touch with the friction because it's applied every frame but yeah we can get little interactions like that where we can bring a character to a stop only when they hit the ground and that's useful because um you know, you might have a character who jumps, but there happens to be a slope. And so, well, actually, you can see it here as I'm dragging him around, right? Sometimes he's in the air for a good while. But, like, let's say if he jumped up a ledge, he might hit the ledge very early. But we still want him to come to a stop as soon as he becomes grounded, right? So these things matter. It, it matter. You can't just put a fixed timing on it. It has to be related to the terrain sometimes anyway. Um... I think that covers all the stuff I want to do with the samurai. I don't want to. I don't want to drag this out too much. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to demonstrate with him. Maybe I'll show. Maybe it would be easier to show these collision response things. No, I'll I'll move to working with the, the jumper now. So S P R enemy, jumper stand. Okay. All right, right now, so far, um, the characters haven't been animating. Uh, we'll fix that now in a second. But what I'll do now, uh, and again, I forget I've said this, but this is not going to stress every, I'm not going to be able to stress every single thing here, right? So there's like different combinations I'm not going to be able to show. But I think this will give you a good idea of all the different things that can be done, is if we actually just build something for this flea in real time. These are not the exact values that we're using in the game. I don't actually... To be clear, I have some idea what the values are for these things, but I don't actually know them, right? So I'm typing these in as I go, and we'll figure them out as we go, but I think that's a good demonstration of the tool, actually. So, first of all, this hasn't been animating, so let's get him animating. Let's turn on the timer, so it should start animating now. Let me bring this back to about um, one second. And 
He's got a timer. Okay, so he's animating, right? He has a little stand animation and he's looping through it. Um, one thing that I didn't demonstrate with movement, uh, which I could have... Actually, yeah, let me show one more thing. Let me turn off the animation again because it's a little bit distracting. There is one thing I forgot to mention. The character falls by default. So even though there's these things are not being applied, right? None of these are active right now. Uh, the character is still falling because all of these things can have default values filled in. Now, on all of the things that are currently in the game, the only thing that is filled in by default is the Y acceleration. Now, I might go in and fill in default uh, fi gravity, or sorry, friction values for them. I think that might be a good idea to do that. It will kind of complicate the other movements though, because I'll have to remember that there's friction applied to them all. But now that I can experiment with the tool in real time, maybe it'll be easier. Yeah, that, I've actually convinced myself to try this anyway. I think I will try to go in, put in default friction values. But for now, anyway, the only values that are in by default are just the Y acceleration, right? Because pretty much every action in the game, we're going to want gravity. We're going to want gravity to... We don't have to fill in gravity every time if needs be. We just want to have gravity there by default, right? So I think it's about 0 0.25 or something like that um, acceleration per frame. Uh, it might be less than that. It seems like it should be less than that, but anyway, right? So um, what I can do here is I can uh, turn this off if I want. I can override this by giving it a, a specified Y acceleration. So if I just say that the Y acceleration is zero, then it doesn't actually fall anymore, right? He's not falling towards the ground. And just to give you an idea of how flexible this thing is, um, we can use waves as well. So like some of the curves, the way I um, the way I define it is that if a if a curve ends up back where it started, then it's a wave, right? So it makes sense to me. So some of the curve some of the curves are waves. And um, again, there's a bunch of them. Let me just use some different ones so you get an idea of what they're like, wave cubic instead. Um, and we can do all kinds of different things with these, which is pretty cool. Uh, if I give them 2.5, let's say. A little bit awkward to type with all this recording equipment on the thing. Uh, 60, let's draw this out a little bit. This is taking a second here, but if I do something like this and get that wave to loop, we can get them to do a nice little sine wave kind of pattern, you know? Actually, maybe this, uh, <laughs> let's see if we can do this in real time. Let's see if we can make a Medusa head. Um, should be easy enough. Uh, let's get it to ease up and down. And let's get it to go up and down like that. And, da -da 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 -da. and then instead of that being a wave, let's just give it a constant speed. Uh, so that needs to loop. And that should get it moving up and down. Yep. And then if we just turn this on now, it should move forward. There we go. We just made a Medusa head, right? It's pretty cool. And of course, we can tweak the magnitude of the wave by giving it different values. If I put in like minus three and three like that, it should move up and down a little bit more than it has been before. And of course, I can give it a lower speed if I want. I can slow it down like that. Uh, Right, so there's, there's different things you can do. Now, I don't know how useful these wave things will be for a Mushido specifically, but it's pretty cool that they can be done like that. Um, okay, so let me turn that stuff off. Let me turn all of these off now. And let's show the animation instead. Uh, for the animation, um, let's turn this back on. We've got a timer option here. Um, okay, and actually this is a good demonstration here. If I get him to stay alive for three seconds, you can see that the animation is coming to a stop after one second because it's on hold. If I put it to loop instead, it should loop now. It should just go back to the start and start over. Cool. And not all, not all of these things actually have to have a duration. The duration is just useful for editing it. If I put in a duration of minus one, it just means it'll last forever, right? So we don't have to have a duration on everything. It's just useful for editing to make sure that it respawns after a little while. Um, yeah. So 
if I change the rate, hopefully you're getting an idea of how this stuff works now. If I change it to 1 over 20, it's going to play a lot faster. That's obviously way too fast for this. This is supposed to be a more relaxed animation, so let's change it to 1 over 50 instead. Okay, it's a little bit more lively. Um, I think a slight curve... Oh, yeah, it, because I changed it to 1 over 50, this, this doesn't actually matter, but I'll explain this anyway. Um, because I've changed this to 1 over 50, it no longer divides evenly into 1 over 80, so you'll actually see him snap a little bit when he respawns. But that's fine, that's just him respawning, that's all. So there we go. So that's when the snap happens, is when it respawns back at the start. Which is good, we want that to happen for editing purposes, right? Um, so, let's give this a slight ease. I think I'd have to use a light touch with this, mono in ease, so just an ease on it. And now it should have, so now it's, you can see it kind of comes to a stop for a second. That <laughs> The snap is bugging me. Let's change it to 200. So now it'll happen four, exactly four times before it respawns and we, it should be seamless. Um, it's actually respawning here. It's just seamless because this divides evenly into that. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's it's got a little bit of a heft to it. I kind of like that. It kind of looks like it's almost uh, doing a jump faint, like a very light kind of, am I going to jump or not, right? It's kind of, I don't know. Uh, I think that looks looks about right to me. Um, but I could do another thing, like I'll demonstrate this. This is, let's say if we do wave triangle up instead. If we get him to loop, now we can get a kind of Mario and Luigi effect, right? The old RPG effect where the character kind of bounces back and forth. Again, a wave ends where it starts, which means that it's it's doing a loop. Um, it's it's going forward and then backward and forward and backward and forward and backward, which gives you that kind of bouncy quality, right? Not right for this character in this game, um, but maybe maybe some other character, and definitely for certain types of games that would be the you know the right call. That would be a cool thing to have in there. Um, let's put this back to a mono in ease up instead. Okay, that looks about right to me. Maybe we'll end up tweaking it a little bit more, but yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's not dwell on it. Uh, let's make this action last for 50 frames. And then now it's time to demonstrate what else we can do with this thing, right? So this thing here is our action transition trigger. There's all kinds of triggers I can use and I can add more very easily. Um, right now on this, this tool, I've only put in the four that I'm actually using the most. Um, even the airborne one, I don't really use that one. I'm not sure I've ever actually legitimately used that one. Um, but I've definitely used on duration end is very common. On grounded is common. And on Y speed positive is has, is already in use. You've seen it in another video and you'll see why now in a minute. But uh, right. So these are these different things tell us how the character is going to get from one state to another. Or like when this happens, let's go into the next state. So uh, this editor doesn't just allow me to edit one uh, action it allows me to edit up to six that can be chained together right so if i come in here this is a whole other action and this is why the uh, earlier the character was snapping from the samurai to the flea because all of these other ones are set to the flea sprite by default so it was actually going into that second action and turning into the flea because we can use any sprite that we want right generally the sprites are all going to look similar so that they flow together but there's no restriction on that why would there be right so what do we want to happen here? Well, after this duration runs out, let's make him do a jump anticipation instead. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm trying to not call the characters by their by what insect they resemble because I don't want us to get too hung up on making them look like stuff. I want to try and break out of that mental barrier. But it does result in some ugly names like Jumper, Jump, you know, maybe we need a different name for these guys. Um, and then I don't know about this anticipation thing. I saw a video, actually Sakurai put out a video where he was talking about how they name stuff. And it seems like that they put in numbers here on related actions so that the jump anticipation would probably be jump zero, zero. But I think that's, I, don't know, I would definitely like something shorter to type in than anticipation. But I think zero, zero is kind of, kind of, obscures what's happening you know what i mean just a touch uh, and like by itself putting in zero zero there it's not uh it's not a big deal 
because everybody can pretty quickly get onto the same page of, okay, if an action has zero, zero, that's the anticipation. Zero, one is the action itself. Zero, two is the recovery or whatever, right? Whatever kind of standard you come up with. But it, it it's a dangerous mentality to adopt because if you keep doing that, the more you do that, you end up, you eventually end up with something kind of labyrinthine and, you know, opaque. So I try to avoid doing that where possible. But anyway, maybe I will adopt it for that. I don't know. Um, okay, this thing is lasting way too long. So let's bring down the time on that to 30 seconds. It looks better there. Um, I think I kind of want to do the opposite of the other one. So I'm going to do a mono out ease up. So this should go kind of fast, then slow, which I think uh, it looks okay to me. It looks kind of like building a power, like the last step of putting the spring in your legs is harder than the first step, right? Um, and let me actually, let me drag this out a little bit so that the, so now what's going to happen is the animation will reach its end point after 30 frames, but the action will last for 32 frames. So it'll stick on that last frame for a little bit longer. Um, and let's not dwell on this one. Let's just go straight in. Once this ends, we'll go straight into a jump. So let's change the spray here again. Uh, enemy jump or jump. Okay. We're getting the jump sprite, but obviously we're not getting any movement to go along with that. We're going to give him some uh, Y acceleration and X acceleration. Let's give him about minus seven and let's say about 2.5 on the X. Okay. So now we've got him to jump, but I'm going to turn off the X acceleration and I'm just going to let him jump vertically upwards to demonstrate something else here. So let me just uh, put these, let me just kill these for a second. So these will only last for one frame each. Now, and we'll just get straight into the jump, right? Every time he respawns. Okay, there's a couple of things I'd like to talk about here. Um, first of all, I'll talk about, let me drag this out a little bit longer. Uh, let's say 200 frames. Okay, so it should last longer now. Okay, there's a couple of things I'd like to talk about here. Um, collision responses, okay? So if I, uh, this is kind of a subtle difference when you're just looking at it. When, you, when it's a character you control, it's immediately obvious. But when you're just watching, it's kind of subtle. So watch, when the character spawns, watch what happens when it hits its head on the ceiling here, right? It hits its head and then comes straight down. Boom, straight down. That's what this thing here is controlling. So this says, if you hit something, if you collide, and remember this accounts for slopes, right? So uh, it, it, won't, it won't count as an X collision if it's within slope tolerance, right? But uh, if, it, if you hit your head on something, or your feet actually, if you hit your head on something, uh, come to a stop immediately. So when it hits its head, Y speed gets set to zero. That's what this does. But I can change that instead so that it goes to maintain. So now you can see it sticks on the ceiling, right? So this means that Y speed is allowed to stay what it was, and then it only ends up getting depleted by the uh, generic Y acceleration, which kicks in once this. So on the first frame of the jump, we get minus seven, but that runs out after one frame. And then the default gravity kicks back in so that uh, every frame it starts losing speed gradually, right? And then it comes down. There's some other options in here. The first three are the ones that are completed. There's a couple more options you'll see after this, um, but they don't, I'm not confident in them completely. They're not, I wouldn't say they're fully finished. Um, so of course this is bounce this means that you bounce off when you collide and again like I said it's your head or your feet right but of course this looks very strange because there's no energy being depleted right I might add that in as an option to the bounce I don't know I don't really want to have to have a number another number to type in maybe I'll be more open to that now that I have an easy tool for editing these things but um, at the very least we can solve some of this by adding in some aerial uh, friction so if I give him a little bit of friction, uh, let's say 0 0.1, if I give him some friction, he should come to a stop now, like that. So it looks, it makes a lot more sense now if we just give him some, and you can think of friction, you can think of this as like air resistance, right? You don't just keep bouncing between things or, or like, you know, you lose energy when you make a collision and when you move through the air, right? So we can add that in if needs be and it can come to a stop. Let me turn that off. Of course, the same things can be done on the x-axis, this is a bit slim, so I don't know if I'll be able to, I should be able to get him to bounce off that. Yeah, bounces off it. 
Um, there is supposed to be a difference between, there's one here, reverse. There's supposed to be a difference between bounce and reverse, and it does work in the actual game. It doesn't work in the tool for some reason, but bounce means that you keep pointing the way you were, but reverse should make him flip around so he looks the other way. It doesn't work in the tool for some reason. That's the only thing about the tool which is uh, any different from the actual game. I'll fix it up at some point. But yeah, you can see we can do maintain as well. Um, so there, there is actually a slight difference here with the maintain and the stop. With the maintain, the character ends up continuing on because his uh, his X speed is not deteriorated by the collision. But if I get him to uh, stop instead, next time it should come down straight down because once it hit the wall, it lost all of its X speed. And again, we can think of different situations where we might want uh, different responses. Okay. Um, Another thing that you might notice here, let me again kill the X just for demonstration purposes. Another thing you might notice here is the animation isn't quite as good as it could be because what's happening is the the flea is jumping and the animation, the animation looks all right like that when it comes up and down, right? But when it hits its head, because the animation is advancing at a fixed rate, it's not actually going into that thing where the cape kind of comes up behind it, right? Um, even though it should, right? It's been falling down, but the cape doesn't actually come down yet. And this is what the other uh, animation things are all about. So if I change this, so we'll call this range forward. Um, so what I'm going to do now is instead of animating based on a fixed timer, I'm going to animate based on the Y speed. So we're going to input a range here of speeds that we're going to um, care about. So at minus seven speed, which is what we've set the jump to, at minus seven, we'll be on the first frame of animation. And at, let's say, about four, we'll be at the last frame of animation, which means you can see the difference. I can actually toggle between these, I think, right? So watch him now. You'll see he hits his head, and he's still in that kind of upward sprite. But if I change it to Y speed, he hits his head, and he immediately goes into that downward sprite because he's lost his speed, and we're animating based on the speed. So that's how it that's how that's useful. Now, I think that's, that's already pretty cool. It looks good. There is a way it could be a lot better, um, which is, uh, this is something I, I still need to solve about the animation system. Um, ideally, what would happen is when it comes into this downward thing, we would actually have two, maybe three sprites here where the cape kind of flaps a little bit as the character comes down, right? Obviously, that's like, it's not crucial that that's in there and this will work as it is and maybe maybe it'll be this way in the final game, right? Because it's it's very much a luxury thing to have the cape flapping, right? But as a kind of luxury animation, if there was time, it would be nice to have a couple of frames of animation. This thing would not support that because um, what you would really want to do is you would want to loop between the final two frames. So I might add in an extra thing here that allows us to go forward but then loop on a, on a kind of subset of the frames of the character eventually but it's certainly good enough for now anyway i think uh, yeah let's leave that on y speed although we're not going to see the animation in its entirety because we're going to do something else instead now uh let me just get these back so the character hangs about a little bit what did i set this to 32 oh it's the wrong one 32 uh, okay, so he should start doing his stand and then his jump again. Okay, and let's give him his X speed back so he moves forward. Okay. Okay. Well, obviously it's bad that it's hitting the ground and sliding. Um, but instead of fixing that right now, what we're going to do instead is I'll do a different type of action transition here. And what we're going to use is we're going to use actor on Y speed positive, right? So... Once this character's Y speed becomes positive, they're going to move into state four, right? And this is where we can do something like a glide. And uh, it should open up its cape now, yeah. Except obviously that's way, way too slow. So we need to speed this up a lot. So one over like 12 even, maybe. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, there's still three things wrong with this, right? The, the animation could be a little bit better, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I want to try and pick a curve for that. I mean, it's, it's pretty good right now. Okay, the first thing I'll fix is, obviously, it's not slowing down, right? So that's because it's 
usual gravity is being applied. So let's apply a different kind of gravity instead. Um, let's change this to 120. So we're going to want this glide to last for a while. Uh, and let's, so that's obviously too low now because it's zero, right? Um, so let's, uh, let's give it a little bit of acceleration. Let's give it say 0 0.1 and see if that's, that's okay. Okay, that, that's actually still too much, I would say. So let's give it like 0 0.07, maybe. That might, that still might be too much. I'm surprised at that. So let's say 0 0.06. I think that looks about okay. We might want to go even slower. Let's go even slower, just because we can. 0 0.05, right? And uh, so now it's gliding. Cool. Uh, I think that animation could be a little bit better. I'm not sure which way I want this one to go. I want it to go probably fast. I want it to pop open fast. So let's try mono out exponential um, up. That's pretty good. That might be a little bit too fast now. Yeah, you can't actually really see the animation very much anymore. Slow it down by a few frames. Let's say even say 1 over 16 maybe and I'd say that's still actually a little bit too fast so I'll, I'll there's basically varying levels of extremeness on the curves so a cubic curve is somewhere between an ease and an exponential it's faster than an ease but slower than an exponential I think that looks pretty good then you kind of get a sense of the the movement on it there and then of course um one problem is that it's not coming to a halt when it hits the ground. Again, nothing attenuates X speed by, by itself, right? There's nothing in there that does that by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to do on grounded. Once the character becomes grounded, let's do a different state and let's put him into a recovery animation. Uh, jump recovery, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Okay, and then as soon as he hits the ground, let's just kill his X speed. Okay, obviously that's animating way too slowly, so let's speed that up a lot. Uh, let's try 16. I think that's what the glide was. That seems like a nice number. That's maybe still a bit too slow, actually. Let's say 1 over 12. It looks better. I think it'll we'll get a better sense of how it looks when we, if we get him back to his default standing state again. So let's say uh, enemy jumper stand. This will be the final state that we'll use here. So we should go back to standing. Okay. Oh, right. Oh, right. Part of the problem there is I didn't actually... So that's just controls the animation, but we want the actual state to last for 12 frames as well. So that's why that was hanging around too long. Yeah, that looks fine now, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure that animation needs to be tweaked at all. I think that looks pretty good. And there you go. We just built a... You know, this is actually six separate states, right? Because they all have to do different things. But really, we might actually consider all of these states combined to be one action, right? This is our two actions. It's kind of a, a jump into a glide. I would consider that two real... Like in terms of game design, right, you kind of think of that as two actions. But actually, it needs to be broken up into a few different things to get it to work properly. Um, and I think that about covers it. Um, I don't think I should draw this out anymore. Again, like I said, I can't stress all of these different things in one video. I'm, I'm not even sure the full extent of stuff that's possible with these systems. But uh, hopefully you can see it's easy to tweak things now. And uh, we've been using this to work on some enemy designs. Uh, we got a new enemy, like a very early version of a new enemy up and running in this thing. And it was satisfying to be able to work on it in real time like that. So, uh, and actually back then we only had, it only supported three states. So I'm, I'm excited to get back to working with it with six. I only just added that in now. I think six is enough. Um, so... Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, there there is a better version of this that could be built. I mean, you could you could really go crazy with this, and I'm kind of tempted to, but I, I should leave it here. I think, um, but it would be really nice if this actually could save out the state completely. Uh, I oh yeah, I should say um, I don't. So 
what I'm talking about when I say save is I mean save it directly to the enemy itself. In other words, if I could pick the enemy and I could pick the exact state that I'm modifying and I could go in and tweak it and it would even load in the correct variables, right? It doesn't do that. Every time I open up this tool, I'm starting from scratch on everything. Um, so it'd be nice to be able to load actions in and modify them and just save them out, right? But uh, it has a, it does have an output button here, as you can see. And what happens is when I press this, it gives me all of the relevant um, variables for every state and it just puts them out into the debug console so I can copy and paste them in. So like it spits out the code for the action uh, fully formed. Um, it writes the whole function for me and it fills in all the variables based on all the stuff that I've put in here. And then all I have to do is just copy and paste that into the enemy. So it's a pretty quick... Like if I if I had a fresh enemy here and I wanted to put this in, um, it would you know this would be up and running in about two minutes from now in the actual game. Uh, just copy paste and then fill in like give a name to each action basically that would do it. But I should also say that uh, doing what I just did here with the jumper, it's it's a lot more streamlined than actually trying to work on an enemy and design an enemy. That's a much more drawn out process because. Uh, this guy has sprites, right? He has fully animated sprites ready to go. But of course, when you're making an enemy, you want to figure out what it does and how it does what it does so that it can be animated properly, right? So it's kind of a, it's a multi-stage process where you go back and forth. We have little uh, sprites, kind of like the samurai sprite that you've seen, although they're, they're even worse because I draw them sometimes and they're really, really bad. Um, but we have temp sprites that we use to, you know, mock up things and figure things out um and then so it's it's nowhere near as polished as this in the beginning but my hope anyway is that when we're working on enemies if just getting a really poor spray to move well if i can just make it move in a good interesting polished way then when we add animations in you know and we go back and we tweak again then we can really get something that feels right you know uh, that's the hope anyway um, so I'm looking forward to experimenting with this thing even more and figuring out what it can do and, uh, work on more enemies. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done there. I need to figure out, I need to get some more enemy designs going, but yeah, we, we had a good day with that just recently. So, um, hopefully this thing is a, a harbinger of more good enemy designs to come. I'm happy with how this jumper turned out. Um, I'll talk, I'll drag this out just a little bit more. I'll talk a little bit about design, right? Um, I I think personally, I'm very happy with how this guy came out. I know he's very simple, um, but I think the combination of low jump, high jump, glide, no glide, even though it's very simple, it's a very elegant thing, if I say so myself, right? I, I, I'm saying this because it's been hard to replicate. I don't think anything has actually lived up to this just yet. Anything that we've made so far has lived up to that yet. Um, but I'm trying and it's coming together piece by piece. The other enemies are coming together piece by piece. Obviously, it's not like just trying to do the exact same thing every time. Um, so it's okay if the, you know, like having four arcs, you know, four jump arcs on one enemy isn't something I'm looking to repeat. But I'm looking to repeat that kind of chaotic element, you know, and it's a difficult thing um design wise it's been difficult to adjust as well from moving from programming to design it kind of takes a little bit of gear shifting to do so um but this tool has certainly helped and um uh hopefully this has given you a good idea of the systems that are in place and all the stuff that i've been yakking about so far so that'll do for now i think and uh thanks for watching i hope this one was interesting i don't know if it was but that'll do for now and uh i'll see you i'll see you again next time whenever that is Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.